All right, all right. Hello, this is Peter Draws with the Peter Draws Content Free Podcast, episode number 18, season one, series one, volume one, still. You know how we go at it. I know. It's all my fault. It's been an almost un, an unbearably long amount of time since I put out the last episode, and for that, I sincerely apologize. It's all my fault. Also, I would like to share a little bit of the fault uh, with kind of, well, life in general, if you'll allow me, because life gets cray sometimes. So, but th- a lot of things have happened. A lot of things have come to pass, and but I'm still here, still s- sitting here on my own two cheeks, and I'm, I'm making episode 18, and I hope you're all doing well. Also, let me let me take you back a couple of months. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to had to burp. I'm wait 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 wait. The important things first. I am currently uh, the back to the roots of the podcast. I'm currently brewing coffee right now. Except now, I am brewing it right in front of me here with a French press. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to cut back on coffee a little bit because it used to be that I would cook. I, every time I made coffee for myself here at home, I would make about a half pot, which is three or four cups. So I'm trying to cut back, maybe have two cups or I've got this French press thing here. And I think it's about maybe one and a half cups when I pour about this much water in there. And I got a little coffee grinder and there's a local coffee shop and I buy the coffee beans from there. There's a whole smorgasbord of coffee beans with maybe maybe eight to ten choices of beans where I can go up there and sniff at them. I feel a little bit weird going in there and stuffing my nose in all the pots of coffee beans and just sniffling at them. People, I don't know, I keep, keep expecting someone to come up and be like, hey, why are you sticking your face in all the buckets of beans? Uh, but, you know, and, and there's little scoops I can use. Should I pull those out and stick my nose in the scoops every and then pour the beans back in there? I mean, I don't actually usually touch the beans with my nose because I'm <clears throat> sorry my throat um, but anyway so I'm, I've got some uh, Kenyan French roast beans here that I've I've got it sitting right in front of me here you got it let it let it brew for like five minutes you pour the, the the coffee grounds down the bottom then you pour the hot water I use my tea kettle to to boil the water and pour the hot water down over them and then and you push it down I guess after like four minutes and uh the, the 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 grounds stay at the bottom and the hot bean water rises to the top and then you pour it into your cup. It's pretty simple, pretty amazing. And I've I've been enjoying it. I don't know if I've I don't know if I really got the ratios right or if you really have to get them exactly right because I feel like I've used a slightly different amount of coffee grounds and water uh each time and it still tasted good. So, I'm not too worried about it. Um so yeah, that's my coffee situation at the moment. On the other hand, sometimes I just get coffees from coffee shops. And also I've been drinking tea more often. Some Earl Grey, some loose loose leaf tea, some uh, oolong tea. Oolong tea to me tastes a lot like uh, seaweed, which is a little off-putting at first, but I'm getting a little used to it. Um, but I like the loose leaf tea. It's more simple. I have like a little tea steeper thing that looks like a dinosaur with a long neck. And... Uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't know. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm about to pour that coffee into the cup in a couple minutes. Don't let me forget. I don't. I guess can it oversteep? Do you think? But all right, let me take you back. Let me tell you a little. Let me try to fill you in. Uh, let me fill in some gaps. The last couple of months, looking at my podcasts here on YouTube, I th- the last one was two months ago. Insufferably long ago. You've all just been stumbling around in the dark. What's been going on in Peter's life, right? <sighs> all right, sit back. <clears throat> it was it was a dark and stormy night. I packed my bags and, and threw my bags into the car. Then I started driving down the road towards the, towards the airport. The rain was pelting. 
The, the road and the trees and my windshield, my windshield wipers were on the fastest setting as I drove down these un, totally unlit streets and roads in, in the backwoods of North Carolina. I was listening to the classic rock station and this this um, just like amazing rock ballads were playing and the, um, the mood was amazing. I was feeling on edge, a little bit frantic from the windshield wipers and the music and 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 the rain and and the feeling that florence hurricane florence was bearing down upon me and i didn't know if i would be able to get out of dodge soon enough i was heading towards the airport i had a flight but but hurricane florence was supposed to strike like the next day or the day after and i was like is this flight going to get canceled am i going to get there in time the, i mean the, it was already raining really hard i had planned this trip two months ahead of time, and the last time I had gone to New York, I've only been in New York once before that, the last time I went to New York, they had a, uh, they had the, the worst hurricane, no, the worst blizzard in recorded history, and I was stuck there for two, ex, two or three extra days. And so when I scheduled this trip to go visit my cousin who lives in New York, I thought, and I even texted him and told him, the last time I was here, there was the worst blizzard in recorded history, let's see what awful natural disaster happens this time. LOL. And sure enough, Hurricane Florence happened without fail. Really, people should pay me to stay away from places like New York. I, large sums of money. They could pay me millions and millions of dollars, and uh, they would still save lots of money. So just keep that in mind. Anyone who wants me to stay away from places, and I, hey, I'll take those payments gladly. I'm I'm happy most places, I think, as long as there's an internet connection. Anyway, so I was driving to the airport, whipping and winding around these roads with the rock music blaring. Uh, the, ra the rain was pouring down, and right before, like the last mile or, so, a mile or so towards the airport, the rain stopped. But like it looked like the road was still, you know how the, when a raindrop hits the road, there's like a little splash? It looked like the road was still splashing. There's still little bloops and blips splashing on the road as I was driving along. It was just kind of a misty, that misty after rain look and the, the road was still splashing. And as I drove along, I realized that it wasn't rain or water splashing on the road. It was actually hundreds and thousands of small frogs jumping, hippity hopping across the road as I drove along. And this shocked me a little bit, mostly because I've never really hit an animal on the road before that I know of, maybe accidentally. But I could, what could I do besides just stopping? And I couldn't stop because I had to go catch a f flight and get out of North Carolina and go to, you know, New York, like I've been planning on doing for two months. There was too much riding on me, riding down this road. But there were hundreds and thousands of frogs jumping across the road. For like the next mile. Just a little blip, blip, blip. They look like splashes. Just constantly hopping, hopping, hopping. In every direction. It's not like they were all migrating in one direction. Some were going this way, some were going that way. I'm assuming maybe they were hopping all over the place, everywhere, all across the forest. But I could only see them on the road because there was no grass or anything to hide them. But I could only assume I was hitting a lot of them, which made me sad. <clears throat> I wasn't even stopping to make frog leg, you know, like a, I wasn't even using them, you know, to make, it was, it was pointless, heartless killing. Anyways, I got to the airport, I turned off the, the car, the rock music stopped, and I got to the airport and the mood totally shifted because the airport had this soft, like, Muzak, like the, it had like elevator music playing, which was a harsh change of of mood from from like the metallica or whatever the heck had been playing in the car so i flew to new york everything was fine i enjoyed new york it was great i stayed with my cousin who lived mm, like an hour north of new york up uh not in rochester i think when I tell people where I was staying, I might have said Rochester, but I think it's actually called Westchester, that area, right? Does anyone know? Wait, let me pour my coffee. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta, I gotta press it down first. 
pressing it. Some of you must know how French presses work. I hope I'm doing it right. Some of you know what I'm doing right now. Some of you don't. I've pressed the plunger down. Now all the grounds are trapped at the bottom under the... It's kind of a sieve at the end of a plunger. And now only the coffee is at the top. I'm guessing I can go ahead and pour it now. I've only, this is only the third time I've done this. I'm going to pour it now. Um, do I have to hold the top on? Here we go. Oh, wait, I have to... Wait, 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 I have to turn it around. Okay, bear with me. Yeah, that's the good stuff. All right. Ooh, that's too hot. Anyway, so Westchester, I think, up in Ossining, he lived there. So it's like north of New York City. He used to live in New York City when we first lived there. I think he lived there, moved there like 10 years ago. I was just some little kid. My cousin is younger than me, but he grew up in, in Chicago. I grew up you know, in like North Carolina and stuff. And I was so intimidated by my cousin because when he was 18 years old, he moved from Chicago all by himself. He moved to New York City all by himself, uh, you know, to, you know, to like Queens or something. And that, that was so intimidating to me. I was like, I could never do that. But he's like a city boy, you know? So that was like not as foreign to him and as crazy of a thing for him. But still, that was crazy. Of course, he had like a bunch of roommates and stuff. But but now he's like uh, married and he moved to Austining. And so I went and stayed with him there. And it was just like a nice little train ride every... if. If I, I would I stayed with him there, and if I wanted to go visit stuff in New York City, look around, you know, at the museums and the streets and the people and the parks and the buildings and stuff, I could, there's just like a it's like a 50 minute train ride of like these commuter trains you can take um, up and down, and it's like it's like 10 bucks to take a train, which is crazy to me. It seems like a lot, but I guess if you're working in New York City, that's just a drop in the bucket. It's nothing. Thankfully, some uh, his wife let me use her. You, you can get get these like um, cards, you know, like I don't know, like swipe cards or whatever. You 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 can buy a card when you buy a ticket or whatever, and then like the train, it's just like an old timey train. When you get on, you sit down. You don't have to swipe anything really, and then like an actual train conductor walks down. And he's like tickets, and then like if you bought one ticket. You show it to him and he comes down and he punches it and he sticks it on the back of your seat. But if you have like a uh, unlimited card, you just kind of flash it. You, know what I mean? you just kind of uh, like casually hold it on your lap and he sees it and he keeps walking. Very casual like. So that's what I did when I borrowed, borrowed the unlimited one so I didn't have to pay on some days. But New York City is very cool. My second time there, I went and looked at the MoMA, one of my favorite museums there. Um, much to my chagrin, one of my favorite pieces at the MoMA wasn't there because pieces don't always stay at museums. You know, sometimes they go on vacation, they go on tour, they go visit other museums. Maybe they want to see the world a little bit. I think my favorite piece uh, was currently in Vancouver at the time. That was The uh, Persistence of Memory by, by Salvador Dali. Wasn't there. I looked around all around for it. I looked through all the galleries where I remembered seeing it before, I was like, it's going to be here any second now. I walk into another room in the gallery, I'm like, maybe it's in this one. With bated breath, I'd, I'd walk around and look at each wall. I'm like, I think it was like right here somewhere. I had like a vague recollection of where in, the, in a room it was. So I was like, in this room, it should maybe it would be right here. No, it kept on not being there. And then it wasn't there anywhere. So I asked one of the people that's sitting at like an information desk, I was like, uh, where are the dollies, like the persistence of memory, you know, you know, the, the melty watch one. She's like, oh yeah. Uh. And she's like just some volunteer. So she didn't really know. She like typed in something on the computer and she's like, oh, yeah, that one's in Vancouver. And I was like, oh, so I came to New York for nothing. Huh? I didn't say that to her, but I think she could see it on my face. I like that painting because so there's so many paintings you see in textbooks and stuff and you're learning about art or you look at it on the internet and stuff like that where 
you see it in a picture of it in a textbook and then in real life it's so much bigger you know you see a picture of you know starry night by van goth or van gogh or van gogh or whatever his real name is we say van gogh here and everyone knows what everyone's talking about it's okay if you want to be a little bit snobby or a little bit dutch or whatever and want to say his name is van something else that's okay but we say van gogh and everyone gets along fine Starry Night was there, and I got my picture taken with it, and I love looking at Starry Night because it's, uh, you can get close to it, you can look at it carefully, and you can see the actual unprimed canvas behind all the paint strokes, and you can see the individual paint strokes and how he globbed the paint on there, and it's so satisfying to look at up close, something you, you could never really get from a textbook. And it's similar with The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, except that the, the, that one is such a small painting, it's almost the exact same size that it would be in a textbook. It's a very small painting, and some of the lines and stroke, strokes in there are so small, you think he must, would have must have done it with like a single hair from a paintbrush, you know? It's very minuscule and detailed and tiny. It's like a, it's like barely bigger than a postcard sized painting. It's crazy. I don't know. It's, I like it a lot just cause you know, but then other paintings are great cause they're so big, but it's an, it's an encouragement to me as someone who mostly does piece of paper sized drawings. Sometimes I get discouraged thinking, oh, you know, people are only going to pay a lot for my art if it's, you know, like big and it looks great and it takes up a whole wall and stuff, which I think is a solid trend and something that does make sense a lot of the time and it's true but there are outliers and outliers you know they're out there lying out there let me sip some more coffee walking around downtown new york city you know just like around manhattan or you know just like around I don't know what the different types of, you know, uptown, midtown, around Central Park or, you know, the, wherever there's like tall buildings and bustle and stuff is very, also very intimidating to me because all these people striding, they, everyone st strides there very purposefully in some direction. They all know where they're going. They're all talking on their phones, their earbuds in, you know, on their phone and they all have some place to go quickly unless they're just like um, some random like like porter standing out there taking a smoke break or something. Everyone seems so well put together and it boggles my mind to think how all these people ended up here and how they're all surviving here. It seemed like another breed of person to live there. Another, something that I can't quite connect with it. Even like some places like pretty much all of Europe, since I haven't been there, I've only ever seen and, and interacted with and heard of Europe, you know, for example, in movies, in pictures, and on the internet. Pretty much the same way I've ever heard of Atlantis or, you know, anything, you know, like a, any other fictional place. Europe might, might as well be a fairy tale land to me. Until I go there, it's not really that real to me. It's outside this, this my, my sphere of influence, or whatever you want to call it. I know it's there, but it, it's not really there in my mind. But New York, I go there, and it still doesn't seem real, just because it's all so different than anything else I've, I've ever experienced. All these huge buildings. I can't imagine what's going on inside all these huge buildings, what all these people must be up to where they're all going and coming from, all these people in the cars, all these deliveries go coming and going. It's just mind boggling to me. Can't really figure it out. It's crazy. It really is. I went to another museum with my cousin. He really loves sculptures. So we went to this museum in uh, Queens, I think, Astoria. Is that part of Queens? Called uh, the Noguchi Museum, where these huge, uh, big, blocks of stone would be uh, this this guy named Noguchi who would sculpt them and carve them 
uh, sometimes kind of minimalistically, I guess you could say. Like they're not sculpted into anything in particular. Um, very abstract, um, but like sometimes it'd just be like a big rock and just like a few sides of it would be polished or chipped away at a little bit, but it's very satisfying to look at. And there's nothing you wanted more than to run your hands down the side of it, but there's strict rules about not touching these rocks, these huge obelisks, these huge stones standing there on, on little wooden platforms. You wanted to touch them so bad, but there's nothing you could do except run your eyeballs down them instead. Not your actual eyeballs, but you could just look at them. But th thankfully, they were very satisfying to look at. He had a lot of good um, wooden sculptures as well, and he he's the one that made these like um, like these Chinese lanterns. I think it was Japanese, though I'm not sure. But like these these paper lanterns, you know, that could collapse and stuff. I think he came up with those. I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not very good at reading the pamphlets and watching the little informational videos that play in the corners of the museums and stuff like that. I just like looking, getting the feeling of it all. I think. So I was there in New York, staying in my cousin's house. Uh, while Hurricane Florence was trying to wash uh, the, you know, I live near Jacksonville, which there was a lot of flooding near Wilmington. There was a lot of flooding and rain and stuff like that. I was living there kind of trying, I was like watching the news while I was like kind of trying to keep up with it. I was watching this whole area of my state where I live kind of get washed into the ocean. And it's really impossible to tell what's going on. You just see all these reports of like massive flooding, you know, like whole interstates turning into rivers, people, you know, I'm like trying to like look on like the power company's website and they're like, you know, like 90% uh, of the people are without power and stuff. So I'm like, I can't go home. My flight keep getting canceled. I ended up staying for three extra days. Thankfully, my cousin uh, and his wife seemed totally okay with it. Um... They seem, you know, it's hard to tell though. Some people are nice and you can't tell if you're really overstaying your welcome, but they seemed okay with it. And my cousin really liked the sculptures. I tried to make him another sculpture when I got home, but it didn't turn out very well. I have to try again. Sculpting is hard, man. Carving stone, it's difficult. I'm feeling the thing I tried sculpting right now. It's difficult. Maybe it's because I tried to do it too small or something. I tried carving a piece of soapstone here. Soapstone's weird. It's like so soft you can almost carve it with your uh, fingernail, but not quite. Hmm. I got to toy around with that somewhere. I was going to send it to him as like a thank you gift or whatever. Like a small piece and then put it on a, a small, tiny, um, like comically sized palette that people sell as drink coasters. And then it would... Anyways, you, you don't have to get it. It's Oh, did you hear my neck pop? I have a tiny bit of a headache right now. Maybe the caffeine from the coffee will help. Or maybe that's what's making it worse. I can never tell. But I can, no, it couldn't have been making it worse because I've only taken two tiny sips of it so far, right? I walked through uh, Central Park a few times. I went and saw the spot where I went and saw a spot where John Lennon was shot at that hotel where he, I mean that apartment building where he lived. What was that apartment building called? I can't remember right off the top of my head. I hate it. I know that. I know it. The Dakota. That's what it was called. That building. I walked up to it and there was like a doorman standing out front and I stood there and looked at it and then I looked at the doorman and I said, "This spot where John Lennon got shot." And he just like, he just like rolled his eyes and nodded and walked inside. I bet he's so tired of people walking up and asking that and taking pictures of this stupid archway. And then I looked up this building, the Dakota, on um, on like Hot Pads or Zillow or real estate, some real estate website, and it lists like a, it's very expensive, right? It's right next to Central Park. It's insanely expensive, and even they like 
they have to like a submit a submit applications to live there. It's like a bunch of celebrities living there, um, <clears throat> and they even like turn down a lot of celebrities from living there. Like nobody knows why some people get in and some people don't, and all this crazy stuff. I looked it up, and they're like listing all these pros and cons for living there, and and what <laughs> there are all these weird pros that I didn't understand, like very detailed wainscoting and stuff like that. And anyways, and then one of the the cons was attracts John Lennon tourists or something like that. Anyways, so I was one of those people. I was there actively reducing the value of the real estate in New York. You're welcome. Um, and then I went into, and, and right there in Central Park also was a little place called Strawberry Fields where they have like a garden and a little mosaic on the ground that says imagine. And there was some guy, uh, some kind of like hippie looking guy uh, playing Beatles songs and every like f 10 minutes, like a whole bus load of a guided tour would come through a bunch of tourists and a, a, a tour guide and they would all look at it and get their pictures taken with it, like squatting on the mosaic and doing peace signs or whatever. And, uh, and then, and then there was, uh, there's like this like Jewish guy there scowling at the guy playing the, the Beatles songs. And I, I was just like standing there enjoying the, the music. And then the, the guy was like, this guy's a Holocaust denier. You're a Holocaust denier. And the guy's like, uh. And so then the guy, the, the Jewish guy got on the phone and called the police. He's like, yeah, I've got a guy here. He's a Holocaust denier. Yeah, he's denying the Holocaust. And then like 10 minutes, and every, every tour group that came by, he would tell all, every tour group that the guy playing, the guitarist was a Holocaust denier. And eventually the police came over and talked to both of them. And I don't know, it was like the weirdest thing. I was like, I think I'm fully in, I'm, I'm getting the full, the full New York experience here. Just like random people yelling at each other, calling the police. I was just really standing there and soaking it all in. It's good. I caught a few random parades, just like, ran, just like random, like, Per, like for the for a parade for this a parade for that whole streets getting shut down and uh i don't know it was good i like the vibes i i uh i got real ramen for the first time in my whole life i just found some random little nook you know like some some little restaurant that was so small um that uh it, it, there were only tables on one side of it i went in there it had good reviews on yelp you know like 300 reviews, four and a half stars or something. Went in there, got a big bowl of ramen, and, and, and it was so good. You know, you could only pay with cash sort of place, even though it was downtown New York. I don't know. It was, it was delicious. I slurped it up like crazy, read my book, and there were like business people coming and going on their lunch breaks, talking business over lunch. You know, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. Maybe it was the... I, I kind of like... When I go to a place, I feel like I don't really want to get caught up in too much of the touristy stuff. I want like a little, sometimes I want a little taste of the authentic, you know, like day-to-day -day flavor of like what it feels like to live there day-to-day. -day. Maybe day-to-day -day people go there. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's a touristy place. I don't know. Also, we tried, also... Oh man, also we went to this interactive theater place. My cousin and I, we went to this place called uh, Sleep No More. I don't know if you guys heard of that. Interactive theater. And maybe it's the new big thing, maybe it's not. But the basic premise of it is that they have this, there's this old hotel completely renovated into this idea of interactive theater. And you go in, you, uh, they give you a mask to wear. Everyone wears a mask and they get, they put like 30 people in at a time. It's six floors. It lasts like three hours. And basically you can wander around and do any of it at a time. 
do you can wander around, look at whatever you want, anything you want the whole time. The whole six floors is is uh, the set, and there's like, and I don't even know how to explain it. The the whole time during this three hours, there's all these different storylines going on. There's actors walking around through the whole hotel, and there's like different things in there. You know, like one part there's like a big banquet hall, and sometimes during in that banquet hall for certain parts of the play, they push like a bunch of trees in there, and it turns into a forest. And this other part, there's like it's like a like a street with a bunch of like shops, like a barber shop and a, a mortuary or something. In another part, there's like a big creepy graveyard and a haunted forest or this part looks like a ship or something it's crazy but you can walk around through all this and the actors are in there amongst you all and you're amongst them they act like you're not there though but you can stand right next to them while they're acting and interacting with each other and so the all the people watching and viewing are just like you're like peering over their shoulders right and following them around and sometimes they dash off across the 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 hotel and all these people the viewers are running after them and they run up two or three flights of stairs and run off across and you're all running up these stairways and off across and sometimes you you almost lose them and it's crazy and intense and sometimes i got a little off put because they were like there's like something crazy happening and there's like too big of a crowd so i would just like wander off and just be kind of wandering around by myself through this through the set they're really detailed sets too it's like and you could like sometimes i'd find myself in some random study or like a surgical room and i could like you know like pick up like a scalpel or some little you know book and you could look at the lore of it you know and like flip through this book booklet you know detailing you know this or that and uh and i'd wander around and find some other little storyline some other actor and actress, you know, they would be interacting and they'd follow them around and they would come back around to inter- and it would all tie back in together. It was like some modern retelling of Hamlet or something. I'm not sure, but it was really cool. I, what it really felt like is there was this play, this story going on and all of the people watching with the masks on so you couldn't really tell who anyone else was. We were all just kind of there anonymously. We, I felt like we were ghosts. We were like silent, invisible ghosts. And then the actors were there. Uh, They were just there. And we were just invisibly watching the story unfold. It was really, really cool. Like like one time I found myself in this, it was like some sort of office. It was like old timey stuff, you know. Um, uh, That's kind of vague. And I was just like, I was looking over this guy's shoulder as he was like, he was like filling out some paperwork and then I realized he was like writing a suicide note and then and and it was just like so intense and uh, then I ran after him and he went somewhere else and he he almost knocked me over and but he didn't quite hit me it was just like all it was very cool I would recommend it to anyone it was like a little bit expensive but it, I guess you kind of pay for what you get and I don't know it's cool and then there's a couple one on one sometimes the actors would take you on like a one-on-one thing where I I was like wandering. I was following this old lady around. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, but I was following this old lady around. And I, I guess she realized I was... This sounds weird, but it's just part of the play, I guess. <laughs> she was an actor, okay? I was following her around. And... And then she, sometimes actors go into these doors and then there's also these like, these like facilitators, they, they stand around in black masks. (laughs) Have you guys seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut? It was kind of like that, but also nothing like that. Anyways, and then this old lady, she, she went to this door and sometimes you don't follow people into doors. If they close it, you probably usually don't follow them, but sometimes you get like these one-on-one interactions with the actors and. Then she opened the door back up and peeped her head out. I was about to walk away to find something else to do because I thought she was just going in there to become part of some other thing. Then she peeped her head back out and she was like, you have always wanted to know what was inside this door, didn't you? And she grabbed my hand. I was like, yeah, I guess. And then she like pulled me inside and it was like a tiny ship cabin. And she was like, sit down. And she put me down in this little chair and, and you're never like never supposed to take off your mask. And then she like lay down on this little bunk next to me and she was like talking to me. And then she, she like took off my mask 
And she was like doing all this weird stuff. And she, then she like poured me a glass of milk out of nowhere. And then like, she was like, there was like, I got like, to be honest, it was like the beginning of a lap dance. Cause her like veil was like over me and stuff. But then she just had me drink this glass of milk, which was super weird because I had no idea if it was actually milk or not. Cause the lighting was really weird in there. I was like, what the heck? I'm in here. This is one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. I'll just drink it. So I just drank this weird liquid that this total stranger had given to me. I drank it. It tasted like skim milk. <laughs> it was totally bizarre. And then, then I went out of there. I don't, and I was totally, and I went out of there. I was like, do I feel funny? Did I just get drugged? You know, I was like walking around carefully. No, but there was a lot of epic stuff happening. Like it all accumulated, you know, like there was a huge banquet at the end, you know, like a big table, everyone's standing around watching. There's these big, uh, you know, like a big play, like dance and people like getting murdered and stuff. It's very dramatic. Very cool. I don't, it's impossible to describe. Okay. It's impossible to describe it's what it had to been there sort of thing. Super cool though. Super cool. I wish I could explain it better, but I like that it's totally open-ended. You can see, like my cousin had been to that same thing before. He came here a second time to go to it with me. And he said he saw almost nothing that he had seen the first time around, right? It's totally different the second time just because there's so, you know, there's six floors and you can see so many different things. You could probably go to it five, ten times and see different things the whole time. Except for like, maybe like the finale is the same every time. Maybe even that's a little bit different. I'm not sure. I don't know. It was cool. It was cool. Huh. What else did I do? I'm sure I did other stuff. I went to uh, the Comedy Cellar. I think that's what it's called. It's like some famous comedy club in New York. I felt like that was a good thing to do in New York. Mm-hmm. Saw some stand-up comedy. It was good. <laughs> to me... I mean, I like a good comic when everyone's laughing, but, but to me, it's almost funnier to me when a comic is bombing and that did happen for it. I think there were six comics and two of them bombed a little bit and that was hilarious to me. And I had really had to stifle my laughter because no one else was laughing. And the last thing you want to do at a comedy show like that is stand out from the crowd because you will get called out like nothing they will call you out so fast, especially I wasn't near the front, thankfully, but those people in the front row at a comedy show get called out every single time. They'll, <laughs> I did not want to get called out. Like it's, I just want to sit back and relax and enjoy it. <laughs> the, when they bomb, I'm just, and there's just like dead silence in the room. I wanted to laugh so bad. <laughs> And then they start their, and when they start bombing, some sometimes they recover a little bit, but then sometimes it just gets worse because they get like a little bit bitter and angry at the crowd. They're like, "I've, I've never done this bad. Like, what the heck is wrong with y'all? Like, I can't believe y'all aren't getting my jokes and stuff like that." It's just some, some, some of them do better. I don't know. I obviously would do awful, but um, the only one I saw that I had never recognized before was uh, I think Jim. Jim Gaffigan was there, yeah. Jim Gaffigan. So, Jim, I'm gonna mix up with Jim. No, not Jim, not Jim Gaffigan. Jim Jeff, Jim Jeffries. Wait, no, Jim Norton. There's too many Jim comedians. Jim Norton was there. I wish Jim Gaffigan had been there. I, actually, I kinda like all the Jims. Jim Norton was there. He has the, if you look him up on Wikipedia, he has the, uh, his type, his genre of humor is cringe humor, black comedy. It's, uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, you get it. Um, but it's cool. Cause, uh, I was like, well, I've seen that guy on Netflix before. He's standing right in front of me telling jokes right now. He wasn't even on the list. He like took someone else's spot. It was cool. It was cool. 
we tried to go to the Statue of Liberty just because I'd never been there before. And my cousin had never been there before since they like reopened up the top of it. Because before they had been like renovating it for a while. But it turns out you got to buy tickets for the top of the Statue of Liberty like six months ahead of time. That's the definition, I guess, of a touristy thing to do. I would like to go to the top of the Statue of Liberty before. I never even considered doing that because it seems like a fairy tale thing to do. Like I never even th thought that that was like a possibility of a thing that I could do in my life, right? Oh well. Anyways, anyway, there's probably like a million other things I did in New York that were cool. I was there was a very cool coffee shop in Ossining. I visited a few times called uh, First Village Coffee. Apparently, it's called First Village Coffee because Ossining was like the, one of the first villages in incorporated in New York or something like that. I don't know. There's some reason it's called that. <clears throat> very cool coffee shop. Oh, the owner's amazing. Just, I love the vibe there. I did some art from them. I mean, for them on their little co coffee shop sandwich board. Just love that place. If I lived there, I would go there every day. Um, also, I went to, right there in Ossining, there's a famous prison called Sing Sing Correctional Institute. The, the, set, the, the phrase, uh, up the river, like it's going up the river or something like that, that cut that. That reference is going to Sing Sing, because you go up the Hudson River from New York City to go to Sing Sing, you know. I went and stood outside and took pictures and stuff. Like a good tourist. I know what to do. Um, anyways, eventually I went home. After like three days, I went home. My, I, Flying into Jacksonville Airport, I was like, oh, it's not this bad. But then we got closer and I saw like whole forests half underwater, little little houses peeping out from the middle of lakes and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, no. Um, there was like a bridge washed out on my way home. I had to take some detours. I got home, and my chickens were standing there just buck, buck, bucking away. They were fine, totally unfazed, acting like there had never been a hurricane or anything. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, here, have some food. I threw some cracked corn at them. Everything was cool. Can you guys hear? Someone's like blowing leaves outside. Stop that. Anyways, hopefully I can continue. It's pretty quiet. Anyways, so I went inside and everything sm smelled awful. Like I could smell the mold immediately. I was like, ah, but the house is still standing. Let's see, I had because I had imagined the worst. You know, the longer I was gone, I was like, my house probably isn't going to be there anymore. I went inside and my whole kitchen was a big puddle. My boots, I had some boots by the front door. They were full of water. My whole kitchen ceiling was just one big uh, like water stain and sagging. And the, the uh, laundry room ceiling was caved in. The ceiling was covering, you know, chunks of ceiling and insulation were covering the washer and dryer machine. Stuff like this. And now I, I, I was like, oh no. And so, uh, just like I'm going to pause it for a while until this leaf dryer, leaf blower's done. Just a second. Well, anyways. Before I see, the one thing about this um, French press thing is I feel like the coffee doesn't, uh, doesn't stay hot in there very long. I don't know if they're done blowing out there. It's fine, dude. Hopefully it's tolerable. Mm. So anyways, I think from the get-go, I was a little bit uh, in denial about the state of the house and how livable it was. Look, I was living in a mold pit, and I, uh, my ceiling was half fallen in. It was pretty disgusting. Thankfully, look, not much of my stuff got messed up. Like like the room where I keep like all of my electronics, um, like most of my art stuff, my bedroom, like all that. Those rooms didn't get wet at all. They did get all smelling moldy, so as soon as I moved, I did move. Um, I did like so many loads of laundry just to get the mold smell out of everything. I bought a new mattress, bought new sheets and everything. It's just like, it's like a whole big thing. But eventually I was just like, I gotta get out of here, because look, they gotta fix the roof. Because a bunch of shingles got blown off of the roof. That's what happened. And then it was leaking down through the roof, down through the, you know, like the joists and the attic and the ceiling and down into the floor and down through the walls. Like the, you could see the water between the paint and the wall, like rippling in there. And it was just like, I, like even if they fix this, I can't live here while they fix this. It's going to be like a huge thing. They got to fix so much stuff. 
I mean, it's not my house anyways. I was just renting it. So I managed to get out of the lease. And, uh, I mean, they had to let me out, really. And uh, so pretty much every time I move, every time I've ever moved in my life, and I seem to move a lot, I pretty much just drop a pin on a map of places where I know someone. And, I mean, that's been the case for, you know, Florida, for Chicago, for Wilmington. And it's, it was a case of Greensboro, where I live now. So I moved to Greensboro about three hours west, um, three hours inland. I live uh, in the Piedmont area of North Carolina now. And I live now current, sort of uh, in the downtown area of Greensboro, kind of near a bunch of stuff. I know, but even despite never really living in Greensboro before, I know a lot of people here. Just, I guess, that I've met people over the years that happen to live here. I don't know. But, so I have, like, friends here already. It's kind of convenient. I don't know why I never lived, moved here before. I like it, though. Things are going well. I have, like, an apartment here. And I made sure, I made sure when I got an apartment here, I made sure to get an apartment on the top floor. Because, I mean, maybe these apartments wouldn't be a problem anyways, because they're, like, more well put together. They're slightly nicer than the apartments I had in Wilmington, where I had such problems with being able to hear my upstairs neighbor's footsteps and their and their uh, their general riotousness. But uh, just never again do I do I think I ever want to have upstairs neighbors. Never again. I mean, I might. You know, I I, I think I said I never again want to even live in an apartment. But here I am living in an apartment, so I'm good at going back on little promises like that to myself. It seems like. Anyways, this apartment's been working out good for me so far. I've lived here for like, what, two weeks now? And uh, I don't really have any complaints. Stuff like that leaf blowing doesn't happen very often. I do live near a fire station. So if you've been in the Twitch streams uh, where I'm live streaming, there I do every now and then there is like a fire truck going by. It's pretty loud, but it doesn't really bother me. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. I'm like within walking distance of coffee shops and stuff. Um, things, I don't know. I like it. I like it. Got my little studio set up here, my computer and my, my drawing desk. Um, it's good. I, I kind of moved here without knowing where I was going to live. So I like, I have like a car and have a van and I, I packed up everything to my van and drove to Greensboro and put all my stuff in a storage container and I mean, not a storage container, but like a like a mini storage unit. And then I kind of couch surfed for like a week until I finally found an apartment, you know, because I it's like, it takes like a little while to like apply and then you get approved. They have to do all these like credit checks and like e email and fax your previous renters and stuff to make sure you're okay to live there and all this annoying stuff. So it like takes a while and I was like driving around looking at stuff and it was kind of a weird, stressful, up in the air feeling. I was... I felt kind of homeless for a minute there, but I guess I wasn't really homeless because I had a home. I had just left it. That's all. <laughs> I don't know, a moldy home. But I feel bad saying I was homeless for the people who are actually homeless, right? It feels disingenuous or something like that or insulting to truly homeless people. But I was living without a home, but it was of my own choice kind of, I guess. I don't know, but I have a home again now. And I'm thankful for it, and it's working well, settling into it. I'll hope, hopefully we can do another little house tour again soon. I have just now gone and I kind of left stuff in my van for a while. I just now gone down to the to the van and brought up a bunch more of my wall art, you know, like some of my drawings and paintings and some fan art and stuff. So I need to start hanging some of that stuff on the wall again. Well, I, I also I. I made this terrible mistake. I wanted to put some acoustic foam on the wall because this room is kind of echoey. And uh, so I got some, I, I, I do have some of the acoustic foam up now. I think it has helped some. I just thought maybe I should put some on the ceiling too. Haven't thought about that. But I, I my idea was to do it with adhesive spray. I thought this will be good because I don't want to like screw it to the wall or I don't know what the best way to put adhesive, I mean, a acoustic foam on the wall is, you know what I'm talking about? Just that's that soft, was it like styrofoam? Not really styrofoam, but you know what I mean? And then, so I was like, yeah, adhesive spray, spray. So I got like gorillas. What is it? 
I can't find it now. It's around here somewhere. No happened to it. It's like Gorilla Glue adhesive spray. So I was like spraying it on these panels, slapping them onto the wall. I got some big chunks, you know. And uh, to my chagrin, I thought I was getting all the spray on the foam blocks. But after I was all done, I realized that I hadn't, and it seemed like almost all my, everything I owned in the general area of the room where I had been spraying things had gotten, gotten completely covered in a thin layer of aerolized, atomized, aerosol glue. And it was disgusting. Uh, so I had like this, I had like this bottle, this uh, thing. What is this? Like a, like a jug, like a bottle, like a jar, like a plastic container of Clorox disinfectant wipes. And I was just using these, like scrubbing everything down, trying to get the sticky glue level layer off everything. And it was kind of working, kind of not working. And even now I keep finding, keep randomly picking things up and finding sticky glue coating on everything. Uh, it's really gross. Really big oversight on my part, not realiz realizing how much overspray there was. I guess you're just not supposed to use that stuff inside. Nobody warned me. I mean, it probably was a huge long list of warnings on the bottle, but I, of course, didn't read any of them. I just shook it, started spraying away. And the main, it worked good. The, my, my acoustic foam is on the walls. And it's cool stuff. It looks cool. It looks like hatching and cross hatching. I like the aesthetic. It looks sweet. I think I might try putting some on the ceiling. I just don't know how to do it without without getting more glue over over everything. Maybe I can spray it out on the I have like a little I have like a little uh, balcony. Maybe I should spray it out of the balcony and then run in and slap it up on the ceiling. Maybe that'll work if I don't if it doesn't dry too fast. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure there's other stuff that's happened in the past two months. I probably missed a lot of it. It's my fault. It's sometimes just hard to... Here, you guys want some excuses? Here's my, here's my cop out. It's hard to sit down and talk into the microphone for an hour like this. There you go. There you go. That's it. It's not a good excuse. Not a good excuse because I'm actually doing it right now. It's not that hard. When you're not doing it and you think about doing it, it's like, uh... Most of the things that I don't do, I don't do because I think, uh, I'd rather just draw. It's almost unhealthy. I'd rather just draw, that's what I tell myself. It's tough. I gotta figure out... Oh, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. It's, I, gotta, I gotta work the drawing into more things or something, I don't know. Also, I think I could get like twice as much drawing done if video editing didn't take me so long. I need to get a video editor, but I, but you know what? Right, and rightly so, video editors charge like 20 bucks an hour and it costs like three hours to vid edit a video. I don't know, it's like, I can't be paying 60 bucks a video. These are my problems right now. These are my main problems in life. So yeah, there you go, just sharing, just sharing. Anyways. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's see what else happened in my life. I've, uh, I'm wearing a flannel shirt right now. Is flannel the design, like this weird red and black plaid? Or is it uh, the texture of the cloth? Or what's going on there? What is that? Also, I've been enjoying playing my guitalele a little bit. I'll play you a chord on there. But it, it could be out of tune. I don't know. I haven't played it in a few days. Here's a D chord. An A chord. This, an E. And a G. So B7. It's like an E7 and uh, D7. All right, there you go.
Also, I've been, re I've been really enjoying wearing my Uggs. I like those. Very comfy. Uh, I don't really care how they look. They feel great. Some people say, you know, they try to guilt people into not wearing things like Uggs or Crocs. Uh, but, uh, you know, you know, back off. Just back off. We don't care. We wear what we want. That's the bottom line. Yeah. I think I have, let me, let me pour the rest of my, there's one, there's like a, wait, let me take a big sip. This coffee, see the, the good thing about having the coffee The uh, like the coffee making machine is that that carafe, the coffee pot there. It sits on a electronic like the little pad it sits on in the coffee maker is electronically heated, so it keeps the coffee warm for longer. That's not happening here with this French press. I'm not sure what to do with about that. Maybe I just have to drink large of pretty much all the coffee in the French press all at once before it gets starts cooling down. You know. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's really good, but it's getting cold too fast. Should I microwave it or get like one? They do have those little USB coasters, USB powered coasters that can keep your coffee cup warm. I've seen those on like Think Geek. Man, I haven't thought about Think Geek in like four years. What if they, they're still a thing? I think I bought a little one. One of those little Annoyatrons off there once. I won't tell you what for, but I think it worked well. Also, let me know if you have any ideas. There's a, a maker space near me. If you have any ideas for what you think I should make at a maker space, they have things like uh, laser cutters, uh, CNC machines, 3D printing machines, um, like uh, th computer controlled sewing machines for like making patches, uh, regular sewing machines, like very, like big industrial sewing machines for like sewing jeans and stuff, you know, um, they have all sorts of woodworking machines, you know, like table saws, joiners, uh, lathes, uh, you know, band saws, and they have like metal working machines, like ones for bending huge sheets of metal and making like or metal origami and metal cutting machines and punches. Uh, they have uh, all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So I think I might get a membership to that makerspace. It's kind of like a gym, you know, you just pay like a mon monthly membership and you can go use all those equipments. They have like uh, uh, like pottery wheels, stuff like that. So let me know if you guys have any ideas. Like, hey, Peter, because you guys always say that stuff and it was like, Peter, you should make this. Peter, you should make that. So now take that into account, all your ideas. Take it into account that I now have access or could have access to all, these, all this cool equipment. And what do you guys think? What do you guys think? You know, I'm thinking... I mean, I could make like a bunch of like cool laser engraved coasters or something. That sounds a little cliche, but you know, that I, I don't know. I need your help because I daydream a lot about what to make, but it's mostly just drawing. And I feel like I haven't been daydreaming about what to make with all these cool machines and equipment in mind because I haven't considered that I did have this stuff in mind. So I haven't, I don't have years of daydreaming with this stuff in mind, you know, in the daydream bank, sort of, so to speak, so to say. It's tough. I need to I need to start daydreaming on overtime here with this, with these possibilities on the brain. Hmm. Could 3D print some stuff, but to 3D print it, you got to 3D model it first. I don't know if I don't know if I. I mean, I, I kind of know how to 3D model. I've done it with like Blender before. I'd have to relearn Blender already, but I think the learning curve would. It'd be easier for me because I I did it before like 10, 10 years ago. I can't believe that was 10 years ago when I did that in high school. I'm so old, man. I'm freaking ancient. I, I, they had Blender in my high school, like a little Blender class. And there was, there was a little competition they had for who could make the coolest thing with Blender. And I won. And they gave me 
a 128 megabyte MP3 player. That was the grand prize, powered by two AAA batteries. Mm hmm. That thing was awesome. Yep. I listened to that thing a lot. It had a neck strap, earbuds. It was cool. It was really cool. And then later I got a Zune. Microsoft Zune. Those things were sick, dude. And then my friend broke it because he had it in his pocket and he did a handstand in a bowling, a bowling alley parking lot and it fell out of his pocket and busted it. That's just how it goes down sometimes. And that was the end of the Zune. All right. Well, I mean, that's really all I got right now. All right. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're uh, feeling okay. If you're not, I hope you start feeling a little bit better or a lot better. I hope you start the slow incline towards betterness soon. Hope you sleep enough. Eat okay. Stuff like that. Draw a picture or make something if you feel like it. I don't know. I wish the best for you in some regard or another. Okay, love you. Bye.